Welcome back to the series where we look at the origins and history of various topics in gaming. In this episode, we're taking a look at none other than the zany Borderlands series. Created by Gearbox and published by 2K Games, Borderlands began production in 2005 and was first unveiled in the September 2007 issue of Game Informer. The idea for a shooter with RPG mechanics was brought about due to Gearbox's Randy Pitchford's love for both genres and felt that despite being very different from one another, could be fused together. Even though they had the core gameplay concept in place, they initially had no narrative to drive the player forward. Eventually, they came up with the idea of the player taking the role of a Vault Hunter on a mysterious planet known as Pandora. Pandora is a place of numerous dangerous species that all happen to want to kill you, but most notably a legendary vault that's said to house rare and sought after alien technology. This vault has naturally attracted the attention of several corporations who hope to reap the rewards, not to mention the four fortune hungry main characters, Mordecai, Lilith, Roland and Brick. At the beginning of the game you are given the choice of any one of them, each controls similarly but has different skill trees and abilities that set them apart. Initially during the game's development it didn't support the iconic cel shaded art style we all know it for, with some concepts that drew inspiration from the likes of Mass Effect, Gears of War and even Ghost in the Shell. Ultimately they opted to go for a gritty realistic tone that looked quite similar to that of Fallout 3 and many other games of that time. This similarity with games like Fallout 3 and Rage began to cause concern for the team after testers felt Borderlands looked too alike them. Not wanting to be considered as a poor man's rage, they reluctantly went back to the drawing board in an attempt to overhaul the art style to something that would stand out. This was a problem however on two fronts, the cost involved in making such a drastic change as well as attempting to meet a deadline later of that very same year. They of course eventually found the comic book style the series is synonymous with, but they did admit it wasn't truly original and that it was influenced by a short film called Code Hunters. Interestingly, the creative director behind the gritty and realistic design was so disappointed by the change that she left the company and hasn't returned to game design since. Borderlands released in October of 2009, and despite the massive change of art style late into development, would go on to receive a positive reception, garnering an average Metacritic of 83. It was praised for its art direction, but was criticised heavily for its lacklustre bare story. The game sold well, shifting around 3 to 4.5 million units worldwide. Due to the unexpected success that the first game achieved, a sequel was greenlit soon after, with confirmation of its development in August of 2011. Borderlands 2 is set five years later, with new megalomaniac villain Handsome Jack taking over Hyperion and claiming himself the new leader of Pandora. It's now up to four new Vault Hunters, Axon, Maya, Zero and Salvador to take him down, and just like the first game, each has their own unique abilities and skill trees to take advantage of. Despite featuring new protagonists, the previous Vault Hunters all feature heavily in the story and now have actual voices, making them feel a lot more fleshed out. In fact, from the get-go, the team wanted to make sure they made for a more compelling, fleshed out plot overall to address the biggest negative of the last game. However, they were also cautious of making sure it didn't get in the way of the gameplay. Talking of gameplay, Borderlands 2 made several changes and improvements. For starters, they increased the already large total number of weapon combinations, and although no exact figure was given, Randy Pitchford said it greatly increases the number over the first. In addition, Iridium weapons were replaced with E-Tech weapons, and a new elemental type was introduced called Slag. One of the biggest new features added was in the form of badass ranks, giving players the opportunity to upgrade a stat slightly after completing various challenges. You could even continue to increase your stat via this method long after hitting the level cap, rewarding the most dedicated of players. The sequel also offered up the chance to customise your character's visuals with the ability to change the head and body with various different skins. Borderlands 2 released in September of 2012, three years after the original, and was received extremely well with an average Metacritic of 90. The game sold over 15 million units, substantially more than the first, proving to be 2K's best selling game to date. Just a month later, an Italian mobile game was launched that you most likely haven't heard of before. Unlike the previous console games in the series, Borderlands Legends took inspiration from the strategy genre and the results were mixed. The game received a comparatively low score of 52 on Metacritic, noting that although it managed to replicate the look of the core console titles, it was lacking in content and that the controls were often unresponsive. In September of 2014, Borderlands the pre-sequel would release. The pre-sequel was not created solely by Gearbox, but largely by 2K Australia and also happened to be the studio's last game as they were shut down only a few months later. The game is set between the first and second and once again follows a new group of Vault Hunters, this time Athena, Wilhelm, Nisha and Claptrap. Instead of being set on Pandora itself, the pre-sequel is set exclusively on Elpis, Pandora's Moon 
With this different location, there were some interesting gameplay changes in the form of low gravity and oxygen meters. Low gravity allowed the player to jump much higher, albeit slower, as well as perform a ground pound on enemies. The need to replenish your oxygen was tied to Ozkits, devices that dictated your total oxygen capacity and maximum slam damage. Just like Borderlands 2, the pre-sequel also introduced a new weapon type in the form of laser weapons, as well as cryo, a new elemental damage type. When the enemy is inflicted with cryo, they are frozen solid for 6 seconds, taking small amounts of damage during its duration. The pre-sequel received a positive reception, although notably lower scores than the first and second game, with a Metacritic of 75. It was praised for its anti-gravity mechanics, but was put down for its pacing issues. The following game to release was also not made by Gearbox, nor a traditional game in the series. Tales from the Borderlands is an episodic game created by Telltale, and plays much like the developer's previous titles. Work began on the game when Claptrap was being added into one of Telltale's other games, Poker Night 2, as a cameo appearance. From there, both companies got to talking, realising that the Borderlands universe had a lot of interesting characters with potentially great stories that Telltale could build upon that couldn't be in the core series. Chronologically, the game takes place after all the previous titles and features two new main characters, Reese, who was voiced by popular voice actor Troy Baker, and Fiona, who was voiced by similarly popular voice actor Laura Bailey. Many returning characters are also featured from Handsome Jack, Zero, Brick and Mordecai, to name just a few. Tales from the Borderlands received a very positive score overall of 86 on Metacritic, and is often regarded as one of, if not the best Telltale games to date. The highest rated episode was the fifth and final one, with the lowest rated being the fourth. Reviewers praised the game for its story, characters and humour, but did criticise it for its numerous glitches. Despite receiving such good reviews, due to the unexpectedly poor sales, a sequel was never greenlit. The last Borderlands title to release was a remastered collection of Borderlands 2 and a pre-sequel in 2015, now running at 60 frames per second and 1080p, with all previous DLC included. Interestingly, the remaster of each game was handled by two different teams, Borderlands 2 by Iron Galaxy Studios and the pre-sequel by Armature Studio. Despite strangely not including the first game, the collection was received positively with a Metacritic of 81, noting the amount of content on offer in one package, as well as the performance increase that made for an overall better experience. Fast forward to 2018 and we have yet to receive another game in the series, however the long overdue and awaited Borderlands 3 is in production and has been since around 2015. We even got a glimpse of the technology Gearbox are using for the title at GDC of last year, showing off elements like greater dynamic lighting and real-time shadows. This will be the first core game in the series to be catered to the 8th generation of consoles, and therefore should easily be the most graphically impressive, with the team referring to it as the big one. Recent rumours that cropped up in May suggest the game might release later than originally hinted, with 2K now suggesting it has slipped into the 2020 fiscal year, but none of this is confirmed, so take it with a pinch of salt for now. Borderlands 3 release date rumours aside, we did also get a potential leak of the original Borderlands receiving a remaster for the PS4 and Xbox One after the Korean rating board rated a Borderlands Game of the Year edition. Despite not being confirmed, it seems like a leak that has a very high chance of coming to fruition and could be out in the relatively near future. So there you have it, the origins and history of the Borderlands series from start to finish. Let me know what your favourite Borderlands game is and why. If you enjoyed the video be sure to leave a like, subscribe and hit that bell icon to receive notifications for when future videos are posted. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next video.